This is Megatron. This is the glorious Megatron. And this episode of the Beast Unleashed podcast features Stephen C. Phillips, Mike Blanchard, and Michael Wilson. Hello, and welcome to the world's first ever Beast Wars Beast Machines review podcast. This is the Beast Unleashed podcast brought to you by the GeekCast Radio Network. I am your host, TFG and Mike. I'm joined by Pecan Court Michael. Hello. Hey, how's it going? And Steve Megatron. Yo, yo, yo. We are going to be giving you, the listeners, the insight to the newest Transformers cartoon review podcast from the GeekCast Radio Network. Um, this was an idea that, like, I think by episode 13 of TFG1, it was like, I, I know Steve had Steve had, had me on All Things Transformers Episode 9 is when we first started talking and, you know, collaborating and all that stuff. Um, and he asked me what was after TFG1, and I said, honestly, I don't know. I said, if I ever get any of the Beast cartoons, maybe a Beast, Beast Machines podcast. And lo and behold, two years, or no, not two years later, one year later, uh, here we are. Um, actually, it's very funny. <laughs> this will actually be released December 12th, 2009, the one-year anniversary of the TFG1 podcast started. Go figure. Yes. Considering the show was originally planned to be started back in June of 2009. <laughs> so, how are you guys? What's been going on with you, Steve? Um, well, happy to be back into the daily grind of uh, podcasting and uh, websites and all that other great stuff. Uh, not really much else. Nothing bad really going on. Just kind of ready to do the Beast Unleashed and talk turkey no we had enough of that last month yes (laughs) (laughs) and you want to know how Megatron says it Uh, gobble gobble (laughs) right (laughs) Uh, uh, nicely done sir Uh, yes okay uh, what have you been up to, Michael? We just talked to you on Toycast, but that won't air until Monday, I believe. Yeah, uh, actually today, uh, my wife graduated from uh, college for her master's degree. Yay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah so, uh, you know, we went out uh, after she got home from her uh, her last class, her final class, uh, and um, celebrated a little bit. That was nice. Mm-hmm. So she's actually now qualified to be a, a principal. Oh, cool. If it came right down to it. In fact, uh, at her school, uh, she is the de facto principal in case the principal or the vice principal uh, is gone for the day. Mm. So it's, a, I don't know, a nice thing to put on the resume, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, people will uh, have heard uh, Tooncast episode 28... Uh, which was released yesterday. Uh, well, as of this recording, it was released Wednesday of this week. Um, and uh, this evening, I went out to Walmart and Target looking for some new Transformers toys. I was specifically looking for another um, Voyager Prime, and I was I was wanting Voyager Blitzwing. Don't ask me why. I saw a, a review of it, and I like the robot mode. Um, He's sharp. Yeah. The only um, and I've kind of found a way around this. If you turn on his arms, if you turn the wing panels like they're facing his arms and the wings are basically facing up and down, it's not so bad. But if you have them facing the back of it, it kind of sucks in the robot mode. But uh, the robot mode is the only thing I like about it. I don't like the alt modes whatsoever. Who are we talking about? Blitzwing. Trans- oh, you you got a Blitzwing. Blitzwing. Yes. Ah, oh, cool. Yep. Good, good find. Yes, uh, I found Blitzwing and I found Cybertron Mode Optimus Prime. Fortunately, when I got Cybertron Mode Optimus Prime home, and the only thing I really bought him for was his axe, it does not fit in Voyager Prime. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, mean, I could shave some stuff off, but yeah. You know, <laughs> Crazy glue. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a uh, a a toy. Um, kid basher. Kid basher. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, Rubber bands. It's actually very funny. I went to Walmart. The Voyager, not the Voyagers, the um, the Deluxes there, they restocked everything. That, that, that They had at least six of each of Electrostatic Soundwave and Freeway Jazz. Unfortunately, I don't like either of those. Um, but, I don't I, whatever. Um, 
Unfortunately, I went to Target immediately after I went to Walmart. And, uh, well, Target, uh, Walmart had the, the deluxes for 11.88. Target had them for 8.44. Wow. So, so yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm kind of happy about it. Uh, kind of. Hey, uh, yeah, excuse me, I, I gotta go to Target. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> You've already steal, stolen it, Target toys. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's why I gotta go. I gotta steal oh. some more. No, no, I've gotta catch them all. <laughs> wow, that was a bad pun. <laughs> that was bad pun. That was, that was Armada. Oh, okay. Armada, the Pokemon of the Transformers. Yes, yes, really. Oh. Um, actually, it's unfortunate. Uh, I'm actually kind of pissed at the Blitzwing toy right now because uh, when I got him out of the box, um. Didn't realize a- after I unscrewed all the wires that I thought needed to be unscrewed. There's actually a wire inside of the damn toy. I yeah. literally almost ripped my fingernail completely <laughs> out of the package. Um, I laugh at your pain. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> point and laugh. Point and laugh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, so I. Eventually got it all... St- I actually had to transform him into robot mode to get the wire off of his damn body. Nice. I have no idea why. And when I tried transforming Cybertron Mode Optimus, he, like my blur, when I first got blur, Cybertron Mode Optimus is now uh, a paraplegic. <laughs> <laughs> That's no... Uh. Save it for Toycast. Yes, I know, I know. Um, so yes, the Beast Unleashed podcast. Uh, we've got uh, we, we will have um, thirty episodes covering uh, both Beast Machines or uh, both Beast Wars and Beast Machines. Um, we already have one voice actor interview. That is the interview of David K that Steve and I had already done um, previously to this recording which will be featured uh, on the feed and the website uh, the same day this goes up. Excuse me. Um, the Unless I feel like being mean and making them wait till Saturday. No, that's that's the point. Both of them are going up Saturday. No, this one goes up Friday. No, this one goes up Saturday because that's the one year anniversary since the whole plan, man. It won't be a year later. The plan, Stan. Uh, yes, a year later. Anyway, um, I was gonna go in a Toshi station to pick up some power converters. Shut up. Shut up, Luke Skyfalker. Is it Whitey, bitch, Whitey Bitch Luke is what that would be. Yes. yes. Exactly. Um, the plan for this show is you're going to get, the listeners are going to get an episode every other week. At this point, we have not... What? Uh, Go ahead. What? Sorry. No. Sure. I didn't say anything. No, I wasn't saying... <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> At this point, we have not determined what day the episodes will be released. Um, it just depends on when we can actually record them the week before. So, uh, it's that day that ends in Y. It would be all of them. So technically, we could do one a day, and have the show done by say March. <laughs> if we could keep them short enough, that would be kind of cool. <laughs> not do no. We're not doing that. No. <laughs> That'd be exhausting. Too much production work. Yeah. Production work. What the fuck are you talking about? I do all the. Uh, actually, you only do the artwork. Uh, yeah, but I have to put them online. Genius. That's, that's you, you always say, oh, it's not a bother to put them online. It, it, it's nothing. Well, it, I got to do the RSS feed, and then I got to put them on the, the uh, freaking... Uh, information to put in the RSS feed, man. Yeah, I know you type it. Yeah, exactly. because I'm lazy. All you have to do is copy and paste it. It still takes work. This is like the... Yeah, before we get anything done here, before we even begin, let's get all of the behind-the-scenes action out of the way. and. Yeah. First, we're going to talk about the production operations that go into building the Beast Unleashed. Yeah, well, we've... we've, we've Covered that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, all right, well, we are to get into... Actually, it's funny, I... Steve, in the episode zero, instead of just going on and on like we are now, why don't we actually review something, seeing as how episode one will not be until January 2010, and I said, why don't we start with the theft of the golden disc? So you will hear our discussion on that next. (laughs) 
So, the theft of the golden disc. Uh, Steve, you want to give us some background information on this thing? Sure. Yes, this uh, episode starts out with uh, an introduction by Cryotech, who is uh, basically a big uh, a gangster kind of uh, entity within the Cybertronian uh, race. He's a fallout, basically, from the old Decepticons and now Predacons, and, well, basically what he's after is stealing the golden disc, in which he entrusts this mission onto his uh, star pupil, who is his little, uh, basically, bitch to start out with, uh, is Megatron, and he wants him, along with his other Predacons, to uh, go buy his golden disc and basically bring it back to him, and... Megatron and Cryotech are basically having power plays against each other throughout this uh, episode on who's going to betray who and succeed. Um, so basically it goes off to the the part with Megatron and his group going to the power plant. Uh, part of them are uh, attacking the few Maximals. There's a couple Predacons on Cryotech's side who... Uh, are basically in it to set up Megatron to fail. Of course, Megatron's group quickly disposes of them and uh, further, furthermore frames them, and Megatron basically ends up with the golden disc, and a cryotech ends up arrested by the end of it, screaming Megatron's name. And, yeah, so this this is basically the very first... A direct episode of the Beast Wars even though it's not physically in the show and it is for the BotCon 2006 year mm-hmm. actually I think it's BotCon 2007 my fault uh, I think it was 06 oh, Dawn oh. of Future's Pass yeah. well, this is original air date is July 1st at uh, BotCon 2007 hmm, that's sad uh, no it was 2006 um it was basically the uh, uh, the pre Beast War uh, bodies of the crew of the Axelon. Uh, well, and Dinobot. So you had well, uh, this, yeah, that was for the uh, Dawn of Futures Past, which was the 2006 BotCon. This physical video came out a year later, I believe, but they didn't have it was kind of rushed, so they didn't have time to actually uh, sync it up with the designs from the Dawn of Futures Past comic book. Uh, well, I mean, it looks pretty close. I mean, the the designs are the same for Dinobot. Uh, the designs are the same for Waspinator, who uh, was released at the uh, 2006 BotCon. Yeah, him and uh, Megatron and Dinobot, at least. Yeah, and that that clocker mold was uh, was used for uh, Cheetor and um, Tigertron. Yeah, for both of them, and they used that a, a whole lot for. Well, they basically said that. Uh, I know they said Tigertron was one of the um, uh, Maxcom force. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and they uh, basically all of the uh, the the security guards and the police officers or whatever uh, in here were all in that clocker mold, which is neat. I mean, it was cool to be able to spot you know who was in which mold. Like Cryotech is clearly a uh, uh, Energon shock blast. Which, was which actually fits his character. Yeah, yeah, no, it was very cool. Uh, I mean, I think I would have preferred to see something more like, uh, you know, the Transmetal 2 Dragon, but, you know, they're not going to do that for a, a pre-Beast Wars figure. We'll get well, that eventually. Yeah, well, Cryotech eventually ends up with that form in the uh, universe comics. Well, yeah, they created a figure for him. The, but he also oh. gets that form of the dragon. Yeah, yeah. No, no, the, uh, God, I forget which year Cryotech came out. But, uh, yeah, he was in the Universal Land. Yeah, when I first saw him, I was like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> no, seriously, because, alright, I, as I've said before, I've seen Beast Wars, but I, I never actually saw this until Steve pointed it out to me. You know, of course, after seeing Beast Wars, I know, um, you know, Megatron and, and all that stuff. 
Um, as far as Karatek goes, why does he remind me of Calypso from the Twisted Metal video games? He sounds just like him. A little. I never played that game. I don't know. I've never played it either. Uh, <sighs> it, you said that he sounds just like him. A little bit, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, this guy, he, I believe it's Frank Todaro mm -hmm. that did Cryotech. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, I'm looking that up on the the wiki right now. Um, but he, no, it's actually Brad Venerable. Uh, he's done uh, Transformer fan dub work on uh, tfcog.net. Okay. Um, so I've actually worked with some of these people on uh, fan dubs. Yeah. No, if you, um, and I know Michael won't do this, but Steve, if you go back and listen to our, uh, the end of our GeekCast Radio Episode 5, the, the Top 50 thing, I put uh, Twisted Metal Audio in there uh, for those games when I was talking about them in that episode, so you can hear Lipso's voice in that. And of course, whoever's going to be listening to this show will know who I'm talking about if you've played the Twisted Metal games. Um... But, uh, yeah, I, and we were talking about this off the air, and you guys started r basically ribbing me on it because I wasn't for sure, because I had never seen this before. I said it in one of my notes is, is Dinobot in yeah. this? Because there is no voice credit for him because he doesn't speak. And I just wasn't sure. I was like, okay, I see the shield twirly thing, and I see the sword, and I see the colors, and I see the blue face, and I see the teeth, but I, I'm just, I'm not sure. And yes, he is in this. Yeah, he was the uh, third character shown uh, besides, if you don't count, the diagnostic drone. Yeah. I find it very funny that they show the diagnostic drone in this. Now, see, actually, they have a lot of um, uh, references in the this 10-minute uh, video. Uh, th there's a lot of, uh, like, Generation 1 sounds and uh, references to the dawn of Future's Past. Uh, you get the statue of Optimus Prime in front of the buildings, the diagnostic drone from uh, Beast Machines. Uh, behind Cryotech in a couple scenes, uh, you'll see the Viacon symbol as well as a motorcycle drone oh. on the screen behind him. I actually uh, had found that out through the wiki and went back and watched it, and it is clearly in there. Um, there are a couple other Easter eggs, like a statue of Antagony, which is a Botcon figure, uh, basically a female Inferno, and uh, Jay Axis uh, from the Generation 2 comics, uh, there's Cyber Planet Key, Replica of the Matrix, uh, a couple little pretender things, and uh, yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of little references to other uh, aspe aspects of uh, Beast Wars and Beast Machines hidden in there. Yeah, I, I definitely picked out that, that null rate sound when they were doing some of the battling uh, Starscream's no Ray sound in it. Yeah, I was wondering who the uh, the the female statue was, and for some reason I was thinking it was uh, Black Arachnia. And I'm thinking, why is she there? <laughs> that makes no sense. Yes, I would like to have seen. I mean, I know this was just a a, a 12 minute you know preview thing or whatever you know, kind of giving a little bit of history before the Beast Wars cartoon or the comic or whatever, but. I would have liked to have seen what, like, take take the characters from Beast Wars and take the like the first five minutes of the first episode and have them on Cybertron, like getting to the ship to to chase Megatron, because I you know I'll get to that once we get to that episode um, next time we're we're recording, but I would like to have seen something with with them on Cybertron before they go to Earth. Yeah, that's yeah. that's essentially what. Uh, I want to say what the comic book is. Yeah, yeah, that's basically what the comic book is. But you never actually see uh, much of the Maximals uh, following Megatron until they're actually in their ships. Yeah, right. In the cockpit, a very dark and cockpit. Bring... Yeah, you can basically yeah. just see their faces. Yeah, yeah. and it, it was the actually only the only character to that you actually see without uh, a beast form in the very first episode. The whole body is Megatron. Oh yeah, when they're in the ship, yeah. Yep, and it's kind of dark, so I mean you can't really see too much detail, but you can see enough to where they actually made a uh, they made that like Megatron's actual form and the form you see in this uh, video clip, and that was the Botcon toy is actually like a powered up armor 
kind of like how Power Master Prime is. Oh. Uh, I was going to say like an Ultra Magnus almost. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. Megatron in, in Golden in Theft of the Golden Disc, David K. I, I don't know how long it was. Well, no, it, it was after Beast Wars had even aired. So. Yeah, because I mean, this is. He sounds, but he's almost seven years later. Yeah, he sounds like really young in this though, for the Megatron but, voice. But they didn't have as much of the audio. Uh, editing as they did in the Beast Wars, and okay. you know, obviously he, he's aged, so I mean, it's the, the voice isn't going to be exact. True, uh, but it, it is, you know, it, it actually does kind of fit with this because it's not as uh, dark toned as this Beast Machines version, and not, you know, it, it does sound younger. So I mean, I see what you're saying there. Yeah. Which, if you're doing a prequel, that's that's good. I'm not complaining about it, but it just... I don't know, when I first heard it, I'm like, what? That's Mega... No, that's not Megatron. <laughs> Even though I knew it was, I was like, what the heck's up with his voice? I didn't realize it was David K. I thought maybe they had somebody... you know, Or maybe the, maybe they've got Steve <laughs> you know, doing, doing his best Megatron impersonation. It's actually very funny that you mentioned that, Michael, because I actually brought up the fact to Mr. K that Steve does impersonate his, his Megatron voice, and what did he tell you, Megatron? Uh, he basically told me that it's the best impersonation uh, and best uh, Megatron copy that he's ever heard. <laughs> nice. Yep. Straight from the source. Yes. <laughs> we have anything else that we want to bring up? Um, other than there was the only errors they had in this. I mean, it's kind of crazy they have errors in a ten-minute clip that you know there's a whole another comic and then a whole series on. But uh, Scorponok, Terrorsaur, and Tarantulas have different bodies than they do in the comic uh-huh. following these events. But that that had to do with uh, lack of production time. So they just kind of used uh, old models of animation to make it easier on them. Now, I liked uh, I liked uh, Buzz Bomb or the the way they used uh, oh what was that uh, Armada Cyclonus. I should say the I think Armada Cyclonus popped up twice in there. Once yep. as the uh, the buzz bomb remold, and then once as a uh, some random Predacon getting shot up. So technically, outside of the actual you know le- le- letting us know how the theft of the gold happened, this is basically one giant, really one giant toy commercial outside of the actual cartoon. Well, there, there's no toys of these. I mean, aside from Dinobot. And Megatron, which were uh, well, and Waspinator, which were Botcon exclusives and probably very hard to wrangle. Uh, the rest of these are are not really toys. But you just said that they're they're from different. Are you, well, they're, the mold, they're still from yeah. other eras. Okay. Yeah, I mean they they took the uh, the I don't want to say the mold, but they they made 3D models of existing toys, but they gave them different heads. I mean, it's almost like you would almost expect. Uh, some of these characters to pop up again at a botcon. If they said, "Well, let's revisit Dawn of Future's Past, and then let's create a pterosaur, and we'll, you know, we'll put, we'll create a backslash, and we'll, we'll create a scorponok, or uh, uh, you know, a, a stylized repaint of Storm Surge or something." Okay. Yeah, I could see that. I would kill for a toy of this uh, Megatron. Even though it's just a Cybertron figure repaint in a slight yeah. remold, I Cybertron would kill the habits. Cybertron defense uh, red alert. I think it was. Yep. I should I, I should send pictures of mine. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't go to Botcon that year? What the? I hell? can't afford to. Oh, it I'm was, sad. Where was it in 2006? It was uh. Rhode Island. Was it Rhode Island that year? Yeah, no, that was 2006. That was 07. No, 2006. Oh. It was in Lexington, Kentucky. Woo! Yeah, you could have went. I was gonna go to that one, but short of price and and all that, yeah, I I couldn't go because of the price. Oh yeah, we we flew in, but <laughs> that was so bad. 
if I had known you then, we could have hooked up for dinner or something. Yeah, you bastard. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I actually, um, as a treat for the listeners, I... Because I wasn't sure how to approach the episode zero outside of us just shooting the shit about how the show is going to play out. And this is before I even had the the idea to actually talk about the comic and the uh, and the theft of the golden disc. Um, when I watched it for like the third time this afternoon, I actually, as I was watching it, I ripped the audio from it. So that is what uh, they will hear after this discussion: some ads, and then the uh, the the outro and the closing music. Um, as far as the audio for the intro outro, the way I'm going to do that is. Uh, for season one of Beast Wars, it'll have the season one intro outro from the show. Um, even though they don't change that much between the three seasons, there are slight changes. Like in the first season's intro, you can hear, or the first season's outro, you can hear a lot of the sound effects, like the blasts and everything else. In the second season's one, you can hear uh, significant, significantly more music and less sound effects uh, for the outro. So I'm going to change it up each time we switch from a season to a season. Um, yeah. Do you guys have any uh, other thoughts before I... Uh, we? G- I do. You do? The Steve? Um, other than uh, they're, they finally have a uh, total count of how many times Megatron says yes and no throughout <laughs> the series. <laughs> that's got to be on the wiki somewhere. He says one, yeah, he says... Uh, yeah, that's where I found it. I have actually seen the video though. It says Megatron says yes 166 times and no 54 times, and it says ironically for someone who said yes so much, his last line in the series was no. Oh, that's right. When he's screaming, when Prime. Okay, yeah, yeah. We will get when Rhinox rams him, and and then when uh, he's on the back of the ship. But of course, yeah. I'm cutting to the end of the show, so... Oh. Yeah, yeah. You're giving it all away! Wait, you mean the... Spoiler! Wars, right? Not the beginning of... Nemesis. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, it's Beast Wars only. I'd, I'm not counting Beast Machines, because he's kind of taken on a different, slightly different role. Yeah, but not really. It's still Megatron. Did you know that originally Hasbro intended to wipe out Megatron's body and make him uh, be reformatted as Inferno? What? Why? Uh, that was according to a 1997 interview. Wow. <laughs> See now, even it, back then, they they really knew how to screw up a character. Yeah. Yeah. They almost yeah. did too. <laughs> if they would have put him as Inferno, never would have liked the character again. That would have been it. Yeah. I would have been like, that's it. I'm done. Um, <laughs> I give up. Mention. Uh, sorry to interrupt you guys. We should mention that um, I have gotten tons. During my um, my 48 hour marathon of watching uh, Beast Wars for pure enjoyment, because I hadn't actually watched it before all the way through at once for pure enjoyment, um, I got screen grabs from each episode. Not really, you know, just like good images that I think would make good art. So each podcast episode will have a uh, new uh, art image each each time we do an episode. So that's um, a plus for the iTunes and RSS feed people. Nice. Yes. Nice. Um, so, we will be right back. Podcast good! Come forward. I've called you here in regard to a little-known artifact called the Golden Disk. A seemingly insignificant scrap of metal made by a small frail species hardly worth mentioning. And yet, this object holds the key to the conquest of the whole of Cybertron. (laughs) For over 300 cycles, the Golden Disk has carried the mystery of incredible power under its shimmering surface. I could tell you the tales of a thousand Maximals and Predacons who have hunted this dark relic. Every story has the same ending. Destruction. I have nothing but faith in you, Megatron. In fact, 
I'm as fond of you as if you were my own son. The plan to recover the golden disk is daring. Ambitious. I might even say brilliant. <laughs> After all, it is my idea. <laughs> my agents have, let's just say, stumbled up to the ship you need. More importantly, they have identified the data archive that contains all the information the Maximals have on the disk, including its current location. Don't forget, Megatron, you may retrieve the datacon, but only I can decode it. Of course, Cryotech. Take care, my pupil. <laughs> You know what to do, backslash. Security web would be trouble. Team Alpha, let us bring down the lights. Yes. Consider it done. What the? What are you? Stop! Stop right there! What do you think you're? <coughs> Watch your back, clamps. Emergency power kicks in.
41 transmission on private frequency X9. Acknowledged. Encoded transmission received. Commencing full decryption. Time to completion. 3.25 cycles. Megatron! Feel the disc in my hands. <laughs> what about the Maximums? Who do you think called them? With the archive destroyed, there will be no evidence to implicate me. <laughs> and Megatron? Someone had to take the fall and throw the Maximals off the trail long enough for the real crime to go down. But you said... What I said was true. I couldn't have been fonder of Megatron if he were my own son. But well, if you lose a son, it is possible to get another. <laughs> There's only one built disc. After all, he was bound to betray me. I simply chose to betray him first.
I wish to speak to my lawyer. There once was a boy, an albino, I'm told, who possessed the power of pen pusher gold. He had many stories, all short and exciting, but nobody knew, and so he began writing. He sat there all summer and skillfully sought to perfectly ponder and polish each plot. The settings were set, all the characters cast, his fingers were flying and flailing so fast, and soon the young man with the snowy complexion quickly concocted the caffeine collection. He smiled, satisfied with his clever creation. Oh, the things that did pour from his imagination. Stories of pirates and future police, of devils and bullies, and a twist press release. Fantasy, mystery, both are included. Comedy, action, no genre excluded. You say to yourself, it's too good to be true, but author Steve Saylor would not lie to you. An audiobook so you don't have to read. And hey, $15 is all that you need. From the author of the podcast novel, Black Shadow, Steve Saylor presents The Caffeine Collection. A dynamic audiobook collection of short stories presented by ringtonefeeder.com and stevesailor.net. Steve presents a genre mashup of multiple stories for your ears. I have to be on caffeine to write all this. Steve Saylor presents the Caffeine Collection on sale October 28, 2009. So mark this day down so you will not forget. For more information, stevesailor.net. Transformers Toycast has been transformed into Just Toy Cast. For the past 25 episodes, we have talked about Just Transformers toys. Now, starting with the 26th episode, which is currently out, we are expanding into all toy collections. You can find us on iTunes and the web at www.geekcastradio.com. Transform and transcend. It's going to be a new year, a new decade, a new Transformers review podcast from the guys that brought you the TFG1 podcast and all things Transformers. Coming January 2010, The Beast on Unleashed podcast. It will feature 22 action-packed episodes reviewing both Beast Wars and Beast Machines. You can find it at www.geekcastradio.com and on iTunes. It will feature the voice talents of TFG1 Mike, Steve Megatron, and Pecan Court Michael. So unleash the beast within you. The TFG1 podcast has 24 action-packed discussion episodes on the original Transformers cartoon. So if you're a fan of the 80s cartoon, we have all you need and more, as well as an interview with Stan Bush. You can find us on iTunes and the web at www.geekcastradio.com. Tune in. We are back, and uh, apparently Mr. Wilson had some stuff he still wanted to talk about, so... <laughs> I, I, I gotta get this off my chest here, because I'm just confused. And, uh, you know, I thought maybe you guys would shed some light on this. Uh, basically, you know, the the plan to steal the Golden Disc uh, w- was to split up into three teams. And the, the first team of, you know, Megatron and Dinobot and Dirge uh, was to secure the data chip. And the second team, which was uh, Scorponok and Backslash, was to cut the power so that Team 1 could then get inside without being noticed. And Team 3, which was Waspinator, Pterosaur, and Buzzbomb, were supposed to steal transport, supposed to steal the the, uh, the dark side. As far as we could tell, that was their job. Yes. So uh, each team had a, a cryotech patsy. Uh, team 1 had Dirge. Uh, team 2 had uh, Backslash. And Team 3 had Buzzbomb. And in each case, you know, they, they kind of got theirs, right? Leaving leaving pretty much just the... the uh, the core Predacon crew of the dark side. So, oh, and then there's Tarantulas, who basically intercepts the transmission from Megatron and cackles. Yes. But, yeah, yeah, it was just cool. I, I wasn't really sure what that was signifying, but uh, <laughs> what was the point for Team 3 to steal the dark side? I, I can understand if Megatron says, I'm going to steal this disc, uh, and i got to get the hell off the planet. And I can understand if he says, I need this ship. Or, you know, I think the way it was told later, uh, Waspinator and Pterosaur just kind of show up with the ship and say, look what we got you. And Megatron's like, wow, this is really nice. You know, I think that's in the comic. Yeah. Where Megatron's like, wow, this is much better than I expected as a getaway ship, which is cool. But, uh, you know, why would that team be sanctioned by Cryotech? Why, why put Buzzbomb in there? What did Cryotech think that they were stealing the ship for? Steve would have to talk about this because, honestly, I have no clue. (laughs) Well, I mean, maybe I I think that the the idea there was for them just to go in and shoot up the Predacon base. But I don't, and and maybe just a byproduct of that was, hey, the ship happens to be here. But, I mean, was that supposed to be a diversion? 
And if so, why attack the Predacon base? Why not attack the the Maximal base? I mean, it's kind of like shooting your own guys. Uh, I it think just that didn't was, make any sense to me. I think that was just a group sanctioned by Megatron, and I think that they just kind of... I think that maybe Terrorstorm and Waspinator knew about it, and uh, Buzzbomb probably was just sent with them. And just right. kind of, you know, because he seems more like a crony anyway, more than those guys did. Right. Well, they and, ended up killing him, though. Yeah, Terror Sword shot him in the back and yeah. left him to die. And But, yeah, they used that as their, their getaway vehicle. I think Megatron, initially, uh, when he was being told of the Golden Disc, already had his plan set up to backstab uh, Cryotech, just like Cryotech had a plan at the same time to backstab Megatron, only Megatron beat him to it. And Tarantulas' sole purpose was to decode uh, the data chip to find the location of the golden disk so Megatron could steal it uh, instead of having to go back to Cryotech, which is what Cryotech wanted. Right. And instead, Cryotech got the homing signal. Yes, because Megatron is freaking awesome for that. (laughs) He's freaking awesome. Very funny. I know a lot of people, sometimes some people don't like to watch through credits but when I was getting, because I wanted, um, I love the the outro music to this. It's like it's almost like the classic G1 theme, but it's like in a slightly different musical tone. Um, but at the very end of it, Cryotech's like, "I want my lawyer." <laughs> want to yeah, talk that, to my lawyer. It says, "I wish to speak to my lawyer." It's cr- right after the closing credits. Yeah, that that was yeah. the memorable clip for the uh, thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it says that the. Uh, full version of the theft mm-hmm. was put up on YouTube and embedded on the official Transformer Collectors Club. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, in January of uh, OF, right? And then it says the YouTube version also contains an extra scene not in the BotCon reel, and it was the shot of the dark side in the hangar with Pterosaur, Waspinator, and Buzz Bomb when they took it over. Oh. It says that the ship was never actually appeared in the original version. Yeah, I think Buzz Bomb was dead by then. It was just Waspinator and Pterosaur. Yeah, because taking, yeah. taking the ship. Yeah, they're they're awesome like that. But uh, yeah, I definitely l- did like um, the ending credits that they used, like the remix, the original G one music. Yeah, yeah, that was that that that, that was pretty awesome. Um, so I guess okay. Now, do we have any more other thoughts that we want to discuss before I close this out? No, I think that's it. I think uh, I think we're good. Well, yeah, I had one question. I wasn't sure uh, if there actually was a, a cyberjet of Dirge, and I don't think there was. Um, uh, I th- I think that might might have been even a Beast Wars two release. Oh that's yeah, if that's what it was. Yeah, in Beast Wars two, there was a yeah. Okay, you're right. Yeah, because I'm actually looking at the uh, the G2 page on Transformer Land right now, and no, there was Air Raid, Hooligan, Jetfire, Skyjack, Space Case, and Strafe. Hmm. But uh, but no Dirge, and no, yeah, the Dirge was a uh, the Beast Wars 2 release in the in the Cyberjet, okay. yeah. which is cool. I mean, because I think I I knew I had one, I just couldn't remember where it came from. I would say you have everything, but that's that's incorrect. Proto Man has everything. I think I think Proto Man comes pretty close. He's got a lot of the. Uh, well, I, I want to say whereas I have a lot of the old stuff, like complete series from eighty four, eighty five, eighty six, eighty seven. Uh, I think he's got a lot of the new stuff, especially some of the the really hard to find things out of Japan. Well, he's got a lot of hard to find things out of Japan, but he has. He told me one night after a record, we actually went on video on Skype and we were showing each other. Different stuff like I don't know muddy mugs and whatever else I I don't know, but he said to me that um, he has three out of like six rooms in his house are filled to the brim with transformers. Yeah, my wife wouldn't let me do that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <either. laughs> so um, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I get one room. Yes, I think we're going to close this one out. Thank okay. you for joining us here on the Beast Unleashed podcast. There are several ways to get in contact with us, leave feedback for the show. The first is you can visit www.geekcastradio.com and find all the other podcasts there. The second is you can stop by predaconempire.com slash nexus. Those are our new forums. The third is you can leave the show feedback on iTunes. 
Um, if people want to wait until we actually launch the show in January to do that, uh, that would be most appreciated, leaving feedback on iTunes. That's the best way to help the show. You're going to say something, Michael? You took a breath there. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I forgot my judicious use of mute. Oh, okay. The fourth is you can visit another great geek culture website, www.earth-2.net. Uh, in their forums, you can find our threads for the shows in the self-promotion section. And the fifth is the email address, which is beastunleashedpodcast at gmail.com. Now that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what she said. Oh, God, we're not going there. We now have a voicemail line. Call us and leave us your thoughts on each episode. Be sure to say which show you're leaving us for and your name. The number is 502-526-5821. You can follow us on Twitter. The show name there is Beast Unleashed. Mine is TFG on Mike. And Steve, what is your Twitter? SCP21. Michael? I'm at Pecan Court Michael. P E C A N C T M I C H A E L. O U S A. Mickey Mouse. And so we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Beast Unleashed podcast. Join us next time when we will be reviewing the first three episodes from Beast Wars Season 1. Those being Beast Wars Parts 1 and 2 and The Web. For now, I am TFG and Mike with Pecan Court Michael and Steve Megatron uh, saying in the... Uh, why don't we actually have Megatron close the show? What does Megatron have to say about this episode zero that we just recorded? Excellent. Yes. Thank you for listening. Until next time. 